Don't let setbacks and disappointments tamper your enthusiasm for what you're doing. Does in drones sense? and in life. Oh yes. my gosh. I can't tell you how many people I know who have had an accident, crashed their drone, scratched their drone, and they never come back. Yes. And yes. it makes me so sad. Yes. Are right. you speaking from experience? I'd love to know. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> like I would say it took me until about 30 to really be comfortable at doing things I suck at. You're talking about 30 flights or? No, 30 years old. That's what I thought. <laughs> I was like, you're talking about 30 flights or 30 years old? Uh, no. No, luckily I think I really gained the confidence after like five. You know, you mm -hmm. get a little shade for your visibility. You get a little open space so you don't crash. Yeah. And then you play around. You know, it becomes mm -hmm. like a little video game quickly. So, no, it does. I was in 30 flights until I found my feet. <laughs> uh, actually, you know what? That, that inspires me to share my first crash. So I have crashed my drone not that many times and not for the reasons most people crash their drones. The first time I ever crashed my drone was out of pure laziness, like pure laziness. And that was because there was something I wanted to test. This was yeah. the Mavic Mini 1. I wanted to test something and I was too lazy to go outside. So I was like, I'm going to launch it in the house really quick and I'm just going to test this one thing. And if you have not tried launching in the house, you need to wait a while for GPS to pick up because it's really easy for there to be too much interference and your drone will drift. And what happened was I launched it and because I was inside and it didn't have GPS and location done, it drifted and it drifted straight into the wall. And so, I mean, this thing was like... <laughs> It was what, you know, the, the three, three feet off the ground, just flying straight into the wall. And it, you know, it's not like it went boom into the wall. It was like right. going into the wall. Like it was super slow motion. And it was just one of those things where I felt completely out of control because yes. you know, I couldn't stop it from doing it. I was like, why is it doing that? I was too new to understand why it took me a while later to understand like, ah, that that's why that happened. Right. Um, and, and that, the next time I flew my drone, obviously outside, I was like, man, am I scared it might do that? But exactly what you said, right? Okay. Mm -hmm. The next time I flew my drone, I may have felt a little bit scared, but I felt so much better because I did not fly in a confined space. I went outside right. where there's tons of room where if right. something was going to go wrong, I, I wasn't going to hit anything and I wasn't going to send it like to a hundred feet right away. I was going to let right. it chill at three feet and be like, yo, you're going to you're going to do that thing again? <laughs> <laughs> and then I gained my confidence back. But I yes. think that's, that's yeah. such an important tip. Okay, all right. Welcome to the drone party. Drones are so much fun and they're so easy to fly. Everybody is welcome to this party, which is a weekly podcast highlighting different drone pilots, their helpful tips to help you be a better pilot. And we also keep it 100 on this podcast. We talk about the great parts of droning, but we also talk about the not so great parts when people are telling you off at a pier and they might not be right about it or different kinds of drone crashes, especially if in today's episode, there's kind of unique winds going around. So we talk about it all. And if you're new here, yo, I'm Christine Lozada. I love flying drones. I love helping people to explore the world from the sky. Today's guest is somebody I have a ton of respect for. She's got a ton of confidence in life and in flying. And some of the stories she shares are super fun. So let's dive in. Which introduce yourself. Who are you and how long have you been flying for? Oh gosh, I'm Tori. Um, and I've been flying uh, since 2021. So yeah, after 15 years of working in disaster response, I wanted to kind of pivot and I started blogging, well, not blogging, posting more so on Instagram about my travels and what I did. And I immediately fell in love with the drone footage, like yes. got hooked on YouTube drone footage. Like anybody that was flying, I was like a kid in a candy store. Like I wanted in. And so I bought the Mavic Mini 2. And that's a good drone. I, you know, I wish I hadn't wasted so much time researching it either. Mm. You know, I, I Wait, spent like why? months researching it. And 
I ended up with the same drone that I would have got anyway. Like I started with the Mavic Mini 2 in first place and I ended up after months getting it anyway. Like that could have been, and now I took several trips where I'm like, ah, if I just would have bought that drone, like I would have had it for all these trips rather than waiting for perfection, you know? And well, what, what was it that was holding you back from making the decision right away? I think that the worlds I was jumping in, which is exciting, but they could not be any further apart, right? In disaster response, we live without electricity. In the content creation world, I need an insane amount of bandwidth for everything. Like, you know, more than I ever thought possible. Like videos are more beautiful than I've ever thought possible. Like I went off the grid in 2008 doing disaster work with mm. like a razor phone. Tell me you had a razor. Of course, of course I had was a razor phone. phone? <laughs> no, it was black. Come on. That was, that was a part of my life in which everything was black, including my heart. But that was a different time. Okay, mine was pink. So I was alive for both of us. But it's so wild. Wild. Like I go from wearing tactical gear, right? And like hacking how to live without electricity and everything and disaster mm. zones to like having this super high tech gear. And I think I was just intimidated, right? I thought there was a right or a wrong way to do it. And there's really not like, you know, the thing about drones is they're new and exciting. And if I pick one, I don't want resell it, go with a different mm -hmm. one, you know, just get in the game to figure out what you like, just like anything else. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I would also imagine though, like with disaster work, there's no room for error no. or mistakes in that world. And <laughs> if you're, if you're living in that all the time. It's, it's kind of hard to get out of that mindset where with drones, I mean, it's like, not that, you know, you want to mess up on which drone you get, or you don't want to crash a drone, but at the same time, like at the end of the day, it's a piece of plastic that's totally replaceable. Um, and, and yeah, a lot of it's repairable. They know people are going to these things, right? Repair exactly. Totally repairable. Well, most of the time. Most of the totally time. Totally Mine repairable. has been repairable thus far. <laughs> and it doesn't even have any like limps or swagger or anything. Like it is still fully intact. Both of them. I'm so okay. proud. I, I can't wait to hear your progression to the second drone as well as some crashes you may have had. But tell me, bring me back to your first flight back in 2021. How, where were you and what, where were you flying with your Mavic Mini 2? So I was actually in Costa Rica. I <laughs> You went all out? <laughs> Yes, <laughs> because I like I like I told you it took me months to make the decision and get on board, and that is kind of my style though. It's like nothing or all in. So I had this trip to Costa Rica coming up. Like I dreamed of getting drone footage while I'm surfing. Mm -hmm. So I was like, of course I buy it. Like it's delivered like 18 hours before my flight. I don't even practice in the U.S. Like I'm like Googling like licensure in Costa Rica, making sure I won't get busted over there, and everything's like. Puerto Vida, which is, you know, the Costa Rican saying, it really doesn't matter. So yeah. I took my drone over there. I'm on the beach, probably not the best place to start. There were water, there were trees. I didn't care. Like I was all in. And I remember it finally went up and I was like, oh my God, what do I do now? Like it was like, once it was up, I was like, ah. and so then I just like went up really high above the trees. And I was like, and then I just stared at my screen and I was like, Holy yes, yes. Like my view of the world just changed. Literally. Like, it, I, like Literally. this sounds so like tacky or cheesy, but it gives me goosebumps. Like seriously. Same. Every time. The number of times I, I fly and I don't take a single photo or video and I will sit there like a kid freaking out at my drone. Oh my God. Like, look at this. Like, look, this is amazing. And no, no one's around me. Um, it, it's all the time. It's the best view in the house. It really is. But how much fun are the kids when you launch a drone too? <laughs> because a lot of the times it's the first time they've ever seen one. They're like, Oh my gosh. Cause they've grown up looking at drone footage. Mm -hmm. Like when I was in Costa Rica and they launched all these kids, like came out from the trees and like <laughs> started watching me and they were so excited and I was excited too, but I was like nervous. But all of a sudden I realized like, even in those first few flights, like I could just sit there and kind of show people. And I saw their eyes light up and I was like, mm -hmm. wow, this is really something special and different. This is a really unique way to see the world. And mm -hmm. like you said, it wasn't just about capturing video or content. It's 
seeing the world in this whole new light. It really is that bird's eye view. And it's incredible. <laughs> I love that. Okay, hold on. A quick time out because I'm impressed that your first drone flight was abroad. It was on a beach. It was somewhere public. You sent it fairly high and you had an audience. That's that's pretty impressive. I told How you, all or nothing. <laughs> it really is all or nothing. It's insane. I didn't expect the audience. Like that part, I was like, holy crap, don't mess up. Like I really felt a lot of pressure to not mess up. And then I was like, whatever, you know, these kids have still had such a cool experience, mm -hmm. even if I land it. Yeah. And at that point I connected with the drones so much more than just from the social media side, I because love that. it was sharing a new experience with locals that I've come to share experiences with. And so often as the traveler, you're the one who takes other people's experiences, right? Mm -hmm. And I felt like in that moment, I had something authentic to give back that people were genuinely interested in. Aww. And they appreciated that I was sharing it with their children. That's you know? really freaking cool. Actually, yeah. let me pause for a second, because one of the things I love about you is the amount of confidence you have. Because one oh. of the things I always yeah. suggest to people is on your first flights, don't do it when anyone's around. It's kind of like driving a car for the first time and parallel parking. And there's a group of people who are just standing there. They own the car that's like, you know, on the other side of where you're parallel parking. And they're just watching you. And it yeah. makes it, it throws people off their game. And so props to you because you. I'm, I'm not surprised. It didn't throw you off your game. Um, I would say the first time I had audiences flying my drone, it probably wasn't until way later. I flew really? on my own in very remote places a lot. Um, but I would also say a lot of times in the way I fly now, and I talk about this a lot, I fly super ninja. Most people don't even know I'm flying or I fly in places where I'm capturing things, but a lot of people don't necessarily see me or I'm in remote places. Right. And that's generally because I guess when you're on projects or you're working on something, you don't have time to waste battery in answering people's questions or letting them fly or things yes, like that. And I'm like, the t you know, there are times I can't hide. And I share, I shared this one story. Um, I was in Zanzibar on this really amazing island. It was a sandbar. Uh, sorry, Zanzibar is an island. It was a sandbar off of off of uh, the main island, and there is this couple who ran all the way down the sandbar to where I was on the complete opposite side where nobody was around trying to get this single shot that was really important for me. And they stood in the middle of where I was trying to shoot telling me, we need you to take our photo and email it to us immediately afterwards. I have my drone in the air. And this is when I had the Mavic Mini 1. I only had one battery, one battery. No and I, I didn't know what to do. I couldn't get them out of the shot. I was like, I'll, we'll talk about it later. Like, please just go. And they're like, no, no, right now. We need you to do this now. And I was like, okay. The best and you didn't know do. them. I did not know them. No, but the, the, they were actually getting angry at me because I wasn't doing it. And I was like, oh my goodness. I think the best thing what? for me to do is to hand catch my drone and turn it off and save the battery. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Yeah. But you just, you never know how people are going to respond to drones. And actually, so I love, I love the story of the children. It's such a positive story. And I, on this podcast, I don't just talk about the beautiful things. I also talk about the realities as well. And I'm curious right. if you've ever had a time flying in public where it did not go well, or people had a negative thing to say. Have you had that happen that you're willing to share? Um, yeah. So I have felt pretty fortunate that I have had an overwhelming positive response. Um, I and that's, say, that's usually the case, right? People yes, are very excited, little, very curious. Yes. So in St. Augustine, where I have my house, I don't spend mm -hmm. a lot of time in it. You know, I rent it out, but where I spend my time, I Which, was- Which, by just, the way, that house is super cute. So check the show notes below because there'll be info in there about that. Thank All right. you. By the <laughs> way, we just did a bunch of work on it. So I'm so excited. Sure. I've got to post content on that too. Cool. But I was in St. Augustine at the pier. The pier in St. Augustine has the most beautiful sunrise. I love to capture it. It's like one of my favorite things to drone. But you have to launch from the parking lot and you can fly over, but you have, you can't launch on the beach, on the sand mm -hmm. in St. Augustine. So, of course, this guy comes up to me and he, of course, tells me he knows the rules. I can't fly there. And I've got my drone up in the air, right? 
And I'm trying to capture it. And he, I'm like, okay, let's talk about it in a moment. You know, I know what I'm doing. Absolutely. He's like, no, you need to put that drone down right now. And I kind of just stopped and I looked at him and I said, under what authority do you have? You go, girl. <laughs> I mean, like, seriously, tell me who you are that you're interrupting me, my flight, my morning and wasting my battery. <laughs> and so I looked at him and he's like, I've lived here for 40 years. And so your residency has made you a drone authority. I said, you know what? I said, that sounds like a wonderful residency that has nothing to do with drone flying. Mm. I said, so unless you're here to give me a cup of coffee, you need to walk away. And if you feel that strongly, call the police. I'll teach them how to fly a drone too. Have oh, a nice day. You, you go, girl. I, yes. I'm not and surprised that that was your response. Shock, people around us, because of course, everybody's watching Sunrise, right? It's dead silent. I was mm -hmm. completely mm -hmm. unaware of my surroundings. I had my drone. I knew my drone. And I had this guy. I had no bandwidth for anything else. And all of a sudden, people started clapping at me. <laughs> and I was like, oh, my gosh. I didn't even like know anybody was around or paying attention. But apparently, they saw this random guy bullying me. And they were in support. And I was like, Whew. and I was so um, grateful for that. But that just shows that the majority of people are really on board, positive, and curious about it. Mm -hmm. You know, there are curmudgeons and naysayers in everything you do. When I'm surfing, it's not the right time. A girl shouldn't be out there surfing alone. There are always naysayers, mm -hmm, you know? Mm -hmm. I mean, so it's just one of those things that I'm pleasantly surprised doesn't happen more. And the support is typically towards, in my experience, the educated drone flyer. And that's all you have to do. I think that's fantastic. I love that story. Love. And way to stand up for yourself. Hell yeah. Girl, I, mean, I have no problems with that. <laughs> oh, I know. This is why I love you. Um, well, I think one thing a lot of people forget is that drones don't necessarily have this like positive reputation all the time, right? right. Drones started as bombs, right? They started as things in war. Then they start, then they were, you know, invasion of privacy with a lot of people spying with drones. And there's just a lot of negative connotations that come with them. It does, I mean, again, right? It's kind of like what we have to go through with TSA these days. Like, you know, it, a bad thing happened and now there's things we got to deal with now. Right. There are some people out there that ruin it for everybody. And now we have to make a comeback. And the best things that we can do is be good pilots ourselves and promote the positive side of drones, which there is such a positive side. So There's such a positive side and there is an etiquette that goes into it. And I love oh, I you agree. Talk about that yeah, too. I, agree. I mean, yeah, you know, it's the drones are loud, they're disruptive and let's get real. Usually the most beautiful places are quiet and tranquil and you don't want to yeah. mess that up for yeah. anybody else. Right. So, you know, I always try to be as, like, I always try not to be invasive with my drone, right? Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, if somebody's taking a nap, I'm not going to, like, go blast my drone off you know, <laughs> six feet from them and, like, blast sand on them and everything like that. So, you know, I mean, there's definitely an etiquette that goes into flying drones. There's, mm -hmm. but... I think people's fears really are tied up in the wrong things. The, mm -hmm. the fears are tied up in like crashing and everything like that. And really it's, I mean, drones are fixable. Like you said, it's a piece of plastic. Yeah. Really. It's just getting out there and educating yourself and just getting I, started. I think. I think the thing about crashing is fixing your ego is a lot more difficult than fixing your drone. It's a true thing. It hurts. That's true. It yeah. hurts inside your heart when you crash your drone. Um, but you know what? Let's double tap on etiquette and let's double tap on crashing for a second. So etiquette wise, um, I would love to hear maybe a recent etiquette, something that you have experienced. I'll share one of mine, um, which is, so I, I've been flying in the Bahamas for a while. Mm -hmm. um, and actually I'll share two really quick. So one is every cruise line is different around allowing drones um, oh. and for the ones that I have had security clearance to bring them on. Well, it's tempting, right? To walk two steps off the cruise and then launch the damn thing. But yeah. instead, you know, I 
oh my gosh, this one morning, it was like 105 degrees. I walked all the way across the pier. This was like the longest 20 minute walk of my life. It was so hot. Just so I could launch my drone to send it exactly back to yes, where I was. Yes. It was the right choice because all Absolutely. these people are coming off the ship and they're you know, going off to enjoy their day. And I just don't want to disturb them. And I'm flying high and fairly far with right. Zoom again, digital zoom. So I'm doing 2X zoom, not beyond that because it makes it grainy, 2X zoom and 4, 4K. Um, and so that's just one of the ways that I'm trying to be respectful of the people around me or like you're talking about in a lot of the most beautiful places, it's really quiet. Yeah. And so I'm really conscious of before I launch, like how do I think it will sound? And this is something that takes experience, right? You like, you'll just know what your drone will sound like at 50 feet versus a hundred versus two Absolutely. versus three versus four. And I'm looking around to see who's there. If no one else is around, like I'm going to fly pretty low, but if people mm -hmm. are around, nah, we sending it, we send it as far as possible so that they yeah. don't have to hear it. Absolutely. Um, what about you? What are some of the things that you do? I mean, I definitely, try i'm i kind of avoid crowds anyway i'm definitely allergic like i am allergic <laughs> to crowds so my etiquette kind of takes care of itself and that i'm usually already flying where nobody else is around mm -hmm. right i mean i think that goes back to the disaster response world where i'm used to being isolated that's where i'm comfortable is me my drone and nature and so i am very cautious of what time i'm flying my drone you know is it like, should I capture a sunrise versus a sunset? Like, am I with retirees that, you mm -hmm. know, I need to be mindful of when they're sleeping because my in-laws, you know, live in Akumal, which is right above Tulum mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and they live in a retirement community. I can't be blasting my drone off in there at like 7 a.m., you know, but I'm always curious because there's so much construction around. I want to go check out the construction projects and see what they're doing from above and everything. And so one day I totally thought I was cool. I totally thought I was fine. Like there's renters right next to my in-laws house, but the house is like never rented out. Mm. So I'll blast it for my in-laws house and everything like that. And it was probably like 630 because I'm a morning person. <laughs> and all of a sudden I like get a little bit higher and on the rooftop is a naked man. <laughs> Renters had checked in that night before. We had no idea, didn't know they were there. And all of a sudden, I'm greeted by penis. And I was like, oh, my God. And I completely lost control of my flight. I was like, holy crap. Like, I... I don't think I've flown again that early, like in a populated residential community. Because I'm like, <laughs> let people have their coffee and whatever their morning routine is in <laughs> private. But like, that is my biggest etiquette faux pas that I have done. And I was like, what do I do? Like, do do I like? Yell what did out you do? He could hear me. Did like he see me? And I looked at it. Of course, he's looking right at me because it's six thirty, and yeah. there's no other noises around. Like it's the jungle, right? Oh my god! So it's just me. This guy looking at me with this drone, and he doesn't really move either. Like it's not like he goes to like hide anything or anything. And I don't really move either. I'm sure it was about three seconds long, but it honestly felt like forty five minutes of. My I was going to say it must have felt like an hour. Hold on, important question. Were you recording at that moment? Absolutely. Of course. <laughs> Absolutely. Of course. And I had, to, I did delete the footage. Like I immediately deleted the footage. I was like, I am not going to, you know. And so I was like, what do I do? Do I like leave him a note on the door that says like, sorry about like, you know, this morning or do I not? Like, do I leave him a bottle of mezcal? Because mezcal over tequila any day. But like, right. what do I do? Wow. I ended up just pretending they didn't exist. Like they <laughs> went on with their life. I went on with mine and I didn't fly my drone at my in-laws house for like three months. I had no <laughs> idea how long they were going to be there. But like, and the next time I did, I was sweating so hard because it was like 1 PM, right? I was making sure nobody was on their rooftop balconies at that time. And I'm like searing oh, as I'm flying, wow. but that's probably my biggest etiquette. Faux pas. That's a, uh that that one goes down in history as being one of the funnier things I've heard on this podcast so far. <laughs> Thank you for sharing that. <laughs> All right, let's let's fly on to drone number two. When when did drone number two come into the picture and what did you get? 
Shortly after I crashed drone number one. Oh, wait. Let's talk about that first. When yeah. when was it? How, actually, how long after you got your drone? Where were you and why did it happen? Okay. So it was probably about a year into it, but I'm back in Costa Rica. Oh, a year into it. All right. Okay. Yeah. So oh, in a sexy in- place. Fantastic. Go on. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, like I brushed up against some branches and everything, but this is my first real crash. Mm-hmm. You know, like I'd made some whoopsies. I'd hit some fences on the way down, little things like that. You know, I've lost my GP, but this is my first real big crash. Okay. So we're back in Costa Rica. There's this little town in Costa Rica. It's a coastal town called Las Catalinas. And it literally looks like a tropical Amalfi coast. Hmm. It's like got the European architecture of the Mediterranean and oh. everything. But it's got these lush palm trees, the best sunsets. I'm obsessed with it. I've been dreaming about droning this place for years. Oh, and the that. drive up to it is like mountainous and windy. And I'm getting so excited I completely have no chill. And I tell my partner, I'm like, pull over, pull over. We're three minutes from the place. And I see this, like, you know, I absolutely have to shoot this, this beach. It's just, and it's not even where we're going to drone. And he's like, it's too early, Tori. It's too windy. Just like, Mm -hmm. let's wait a little bit. I don't think I'm allowed to say this on here, but I told him not to be a P word. (laughs) And I told him to pull the car over right now. So he does, like, he's not going to, you know, I was a woman on a mission. He knows. So sure enough, I put the drone in the air. The footage is absolutely epic. I'm like, screw this guy. He had no idea what he was talking about. It's my Mavic Mini 2, and it gets lost on an upshoot in the wind on the coast. Have you ever flown and had your drone kind of up Um, against the coast kind of fly up? Yes. Yes. So when took it, my Mavic Mini, and that's part of the drawback of the Mini, right? Okay, is hold on. Let's like, br- let's talk about this a little bit more because this is important for other people. Talk about the shape of like the landscape that you were flying in. Because when that has happened to me, I was standing on the edge of a cliff. It was a gorge mm-hmm. in Ethiopia. And yeah. this was an 8,000 foot drop. So I was at 8,000 feet of elevation and right on the other side of the cliff like if you're standing if, if the cliff is here yeah. and you're standing on the cliff you're fine if you yeah. just move right off the cliff there's a wi- there's wind gusts that are happening there that are kind of um they're not necessarily in one direction they're moving in lots yeah. of different directions and it's strong and you don't know yeah. it until you put your drone on the other side of that so yes. that was my experience what did yours look like so that's really interesting that that was your experience because the landscape sounds very familiar. I was on that long mountainous windy road and we'd reach this kind of peak, you know, where we were high up on the cliff. Like it was mountain, you know, or it's ocean. I got to have one hand. <laughs> it was ocean, ocean, ocean. And then the cliff like gradually shot mm-hmm, up. Mm-hmm. Right. And like, here I am on the cliff with this little road cut in right here. So kind of what you're talking mm-hmm. about, I'm okay where I'm at. And then I fly my drone out and I'm getting insane footage because it's this bay and I'm on one point of the bay. But all of a sudden, as I try to get closer down and I love the way the trees look when you get a little closer and it gets some layering. As soon as I tried to go down, my drone got shot back up Mm. in the wind. Like you said, I think there were different wind patterns once you Mm -hmm. got off the cliffs. And next thing I knew, my drone took off up that cliff and crashed on the mountainside. I had no idea where it was. Mm -hmm, was, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Like I have, I was like, holy crap, what do I do? Mm -hmm. I didn't hear it. Like I didn't see it. I'm like looking at the screen. And of course it's just like the mountainside. I can't see anything distinguishable. The camera is up plastered against the mountain. And I'm like, well, I just lost my drone. Holy crap. But luckily I, like I watched my footage actually, and I was able to kind of like follow the drone back mm. and see where it crashed. Like, so I retraced the footage. I'm sure I look so stupid. Like this is such a humbling moment, but like, I'm sure I looked ridiculous and I'm like, Oh my God, what do I do? And I'm just sitting here and I finally find it after like probably eight minutes. But again, the vortex came. I felt like it was 45 <laughs> minutes and I'd lost it. And that was my big crash. Like the leg was wonky. Like the drone was like, you did it. And my partner, God bless him. 
God, what a smart man, right? <laughs> like he definitely weighed it. And like, you know, they were strong drinks, right? Like they were <laughs> strong drinks. And I'm just sitting here like, I'm looking at this village. Of course, this is where we're staying. I had planned on three days of flying in this village. Like I was so excited about this. And it's my last stop in Costa Rica, right? Drone is down. Like there's no repairing it. Like <sighs> I'm trying to like get a maintenance man to see if I can get his little screwdrivers to like tinker around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, oh, wow. no, love, no, nothing. So I kind of learned from that. I really love coastal regions. I love mm -hmm. mountainous coastal regions. They're windy. They're rough mm -hmm. to fly mm -hmm. in. And at that point I knew I needed the Air 2S. So ah, yeah, that's why, that's why, I mean, mm. it, and I'm so glad I got it too, because just right after that is when I went to Oaxaca mm -hmm. and the winds there, I think the winds off the Pacific are generally just insane. Like I was used to flying over in Tulum and on the Caribbean side of Mexico, mm -hmm. and it's just a more gentle environment there. The mm -hmm. land's flat, it's the breezy Caribbean, right? It's easy yeah. breezy. You go over to the West, and you definitely need that added layer of stability in the drone. Heck yeah. A lot of people don't understand that because they really do think because DJI promotes the minis with better wind resistance, whatever they call it. And it's just not, not that it's not true. It just doesn't perform the same way as the Mavic Air 2S or Absolutely. the Mavic Pro drones, which are even beefier, right? Yes. More drone means it can take more wind. Yes. And so in my instance with the Mavic Mini 1 in Ethiopia, it was 45 mile per hour winds that day. So even worse off of the side of the canyon or the gorge or whatever it was. And I was on the Others, my drone was um, just on the other side of the cliff and I was bringing it back to me. And what was happening was the wind was pushing it down. It was pushing it down the cliff. And so I was pushing up on the left stick to throttle yeah. up as quickly as possible. I had it in sport mode. And as the drone was coming toward me, I'm standing on the edge of the cliff. I can just see my drone coming down. It's going down the cliff and I, I couldn't stop it. And so instead I flew it forward as quickly as possible and then just crashed it into the side of the cliff. Nice. You want to know what I'm dying to hear? What? So you went from Mavic Mini 2 to Mavic Air 2S and on your first flights, I would love to hear what kind of a difference you felt between those two drones. Because a lot of people don't understand how a, just a little bit of size will completely change your experience of flying the drone. The first word that comes to mind is stability. Like mm -hmm. for sure, the stability factor in it, I was blown away. You know, when your mini flies, there is a, always kind of a little bit of variance that um, happens. The Air 2S is solid as a rock. Mm -hmm. I mean, when that thing is there, I can fly it through so many more different places because I have that pinpoint control of it, right? So I can go through different obstacles and barriers and it almost does feel like I can fly like through a maze or, you know, the jungle usually because it's it's a pinpoint control. Like that stability is just there and the features that are built in are just next level. Mm. I don't know, honestly, if they would have overwhelmed me when I got my first drone. I, They may have in the beginning, but it, I would say like, if I could do it all over again, knowing my intention as a content creator, knowing that I want that 4K footage that's just a little extra crispy, right? That's just got that. Mm -hmm. I would probably skip straight to the, you know, Air 2S, mm -hmm. especially for YouTube, which, you know, I'm Mm -hmm. coming up on my channel, getting it together. <laughs> so yeah, we're doing a lot of things, but I would have skipped straight to that, especially for YouTube, because the format is just unbelievable and the footage is amazing. But I think as an Instagram content creator, I wish I had the Mavic Mini 3. Like I mm -hmm. am drooling over this thing. Do you mm -hmm. have it yet? Uh, I actually have it in a box that's behind me. I'm going to do a little unboxing video later. <laughs> You've got it. You've got oh. it. I am so excited for you because your Mavic Mini 2 came 18 hours before you left for Costa Rica. My Mavic Mini 3 Pro came 18 hours after I left for the Bahamas for a freaking month. <laughs> I was like, oh, I just, I just got the notification of delivery now that I have arrived in the Bahamas. <laughs> that happened to me with my Insta360 
stick like, oh. right before I was leaving for Costa Rica. Again, in case you can't tell, I'm obsessed. Like I am really, I'm just a surfer girl at heart. Like I just want to surf waves in Costa Rica all the time and have like, I want to, here's what I want, Christine. I want to be able to fly my own drone on my surfboard and catch my own content while I'm surfing. <laughs> like, can I make it happen? Absolutely not. But like, that's what I need. Yes, you can just put it in like a, you know, Ziploc bag or something. <laughs> I'll let you know when I reach that level because that would be badass. Like once I reach that level, you're flying to Costa Rica and you're going to drone me doing it. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Well, I'm going to drone you droning yourself. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Please, I've established. I don't need you. I've got my plastic bag. <laughs> Actually, can I tell you how I would try to pull off that shot if we were to go out right now? Yeah. This, this is how I would do it. Um, well, actually, there's uh, let me tell, let me say the harder way. So the easier way would be having someone meet you out at the waves and like yeah. hand you the controller with a launch drone. Right. I would launch the drone from the beach. Yes. I would put my controller into a like a double Ziploc bag or something. <laughs> so I would send the drone out to where the waves are breaking. And then I would get on my surfboard and paddle yeah. out there. And like to prevent the controller that's in a plastic bag from like going away, I guess I would like put it around my neck or something with some kind Absolutely. of necklace. Absolutely, neck straps are a must. <laughs> <laughs> and Absolutely. then I would get out there um, and I would actually just keep keep it rolling the entire time and have it already set up for exactly how I want the shot and then just try to get under the shot and then do the thing. And then I would go land it back on the beach and then I would swim in. That's how I would do it currently. Consider that a goal, a 2023 goal. <laughs> well, I realized, especially in Tulum, after trying to get so many shots of myself on a moped riding around, it's significantly easier just to film somebody else. You know what yes. I mean? So it's like, I, why, it doesn't have to be you. <laughs> yes, I noticed that. And especially with the drone, I'm like, this looks like me staring out into the sunset. You, Damn, I look you, good. You, you know? can't tell who it is. Like, oh, just shoot somebody else. <laughs> yeah, it really is easier. But I always feel like such a cheat, uh, you know? It's only, it's only in your own mind. It's still a sweet drone shot at the end of the day. So I'm stoked to hear you have the Mavic Air 2S now. So you have two drones in your, in your ammo. I love it. And actually, I'm curious, what are you working on or what are you challenged with right now with your drones, if anything? So FOMO for the Mavic uh, Mini 3. I mm -hmm. mean, so I really want the Mavic Mini 3. Right now, Instagram is still my main platform. I love creating on it. It just works with me and my ADD self. You know, I can create little short videos. I'm like, also the community on there has been incredible. Like, Mm -hmm. I am used to being surrounded by older men and there's nothing wrong with that. You know, in my career as a responder, I'm 20 years younger out there and I'm the only female, right? So like having this community of like fellow women that travel that are my mm -hmm. age and my peers on there has been amazing. Yeah. But I also now I want the Mavic Mini 3. Like that is my biggest struggle, <laughs> I think is FOMO. Like I want it. And then I'm like, I don't really know if I need three though. So I think that I'm gonna, I, I am, I know. Like here I'm doing the same thing, right? I'm waiting months to get the mini three, You're gonna even get though it. I know I want it. I'm doing the same thing I told you I wish I wouldn't have done at the beginning of the podcast, but you know. Can I, can I tell there. you what I think is going to happen? And DJI is all about leaking stuff before it actually happens. That's their way of launching product. But this is my guess on what's gonna happen. So the, the next mini, right, the three pro yeah. has come out. The Mavic three, right, the pro drone, not the mini, but the pro drone, that recently came out. So on the mini front and on the pro front, nothing else is coming out. And right, the uh, Avada, the new FPV oh, drone yeah. that just launched looks phenomenal. Nothing's going to be coming out on the FPV front. So what's next for them to drop something on? Oh, they also just dropped an enterprise drone. It's the Air series. So in other words, I think the successor to the Mavic Air 2S is going to be the next drone. And I know, given what's happening with everybody FOMO, right? Freaking out yeah. about vertical photo and video on the Mavic Mini 3 Pro, the next Air is going to have the vertical capability. And so I hope so. That's kind it's, of like it's not a there's no way it's a hope. It has to be that way. 
Like it just has to be that way. But the other thing is, even for me, I'm like, ah, oh, man, do I want the, like the mini three? I don't want a mini. I want a bigger drone. I want the pro. I want the stability. Yeah. Yes. That's, you, I think you that's want a bigger drone. What's kept me on, you know, waiting, mm-hmm. waiting, waiting for it. Absolutely. So I would say meet up with people like me, fly the crap out of my drone and wait for the air is my Okay, what are you doing this weekend? (laughs) Flying that drone, opening it and flying it. (laughs) Okay, I'll get in the car. I'm coming to Florida. (laughs) Heck yeah. Actually, I think there's going to be good weather this weekend. (laughs) I know. I've been looking. I actually am going to St. Augustine soon, probably within the next week or two. All right. We'll we'll talk about it. Um, All right. Party rounds. Are you ready for a party round? Yes. Party round. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yes. Oh, yeah. Actually, so um, have you named your drones? Absolutely. Uh, Haven't you? Who are they? Well, they're in my, the Bluetooth names that I have in there were like Christine's Moneymaker 1, Moneymaker 2, Moneymaker 3, Moneymaker 4, Moneymaker 5. Um, but I was like, I was curious about changing them to the names of the dragons from Game of Thrones. But then I'm like, I can never remember the names. It's like Viserion and like uh, Drogon. Like I can never remember. So I'm like, I don't know. See, I'm absolutely insane. Like I have <laughs> customized names for everything. Like all my ladies that I travel <laughs> with, like my truck is named Irma, right? Oh, and yeah. so my Mavic Mini uh, 2 is named The Moth. Like the I'm not moth? about like- okay. Yeah, the moth. And then the Air 2S is the mosquito. Or no, I'm sorry. I got them backwards. I get my children confused sometimes. Way to go, mom. Yeah, right? So the moth is the 2 Air S. And the mm-hmm, mosquito mm-hmm. is the mini. Oh, that's fun. Actually, so do you have a favorite child? I do. Absolutely. The moth. Yeah, the 2 uh, Air S is my favorite. I'm so glad I got the mini mm-hmm. to introduce myself to the world of drones. But honestly, as a content creator, it just doesn't give me what I need in mm. 2022, yeah. you know, at this point, um, you know, I was actually the owners of a bed and breakfast I was staying in wanted to buy it off me. Cause all they wanted to do was check the surf. Like they wanted <laughs> to be able to just fly the drone from their pool and not even have to get out of the pool and like check and see if the waves were going that day. So like oh that gosh. is a perfect use for a mini, I think, but as that far is. as wanting to be a creator, it's just not what I need at the moment. So yeah. Way yeah. to know oneself. I love that. So if the moth and the mosquito walked into a bar, what would what would they order? Look, the moth is getting an old fashioned. <laughs> Strong, so, dirty, and sturdy. Mm-hmm. That's the moth. Mm-hmm. What's the mosquito getting? Oh, Shirley Temple? Oh, <laughs> no, she's oh, just trying to hang. The mosquito's trying to hang. If, if, if the moth thing. and the mosquito got into a fight, how how much more would the moth kick the mosquito's ass? Or would or might it be a good fight? No, dude. The moth is taking the mosquito down. I do have a favorite. The moth is taking the mosquito down, especially after two old fashions. I mean, it's just, it's gonna be on. Oh, but wow. It will, you know, show a little mercy. It'll let it walk away, but it won't come back for business again. Like the mosquito <laughs> will not come back for business. 86th yeah. from the bar. Uh, yeah, where yeah. can people find you? Oh, gosh, that answer changes like every day right now. But um, the main uh, place is Instagram. My handle is Tori Travels 22. Um, I am becoming much more active on TikTok. And um, now I am on YouTube. So my YouTube is just Tori Travels, and uh, I'm currently putting together my first long form video, which has honestly been amazing. Yeah, it's it's been really a cool adventure. So I hope to launch that this week. But yes, that and her home rental, all of that will be in the show notes. So make sure you check that out below. Yes, Yes, it's an awesome looking spot. St. Augustine is somewhere I've been dying to travel to, and now I have a tip around uh, what can I what I can expect flying at the beach and at that pier. <laughs> yes. Put those men in their place. I'm, I've never seen that man there again. He has, <laughs> I mean, he has never come back. And I fly there all the time. Oh, my God. I think you can see why. I love Tori. Her stories were awesome. We hope you got some value out of today's episode. If you did, please leave a review. It really does help to distribute this. Please connect with Tori and me. All of that info is in the show notes below. And join us in the drone party facebook group we support each other and we also share our latest content it's super fun go forth go be amazing with your drones we will see you in the next episode ciao